Hey, welcome to the Greatest Golfer. I'm the greatest guru, Todd Franco. Thanks for joining me tonight. Greatest season, 2023, 14th season is getting started right now as we speak. And uh, it's fun to talk about the start of the year by going back and talking to some past greatest folks and some past greatest events. And why not go back to the most uh, recent season, August, 2022, and uh, two of the top players of the season came down to a great finish and uh, eager to talk about it tonight. The Garrett Frank, the Brandon Plachinski. Welcome, boys. Glad to have you. How you Thanks doing? For Thanks for having us, Todd. How the hell has the off season been for you, Garrett? Um, it's uh, been a lot of coaching basketball and getting my um, get my knee fixed and doing some rehab and learning how to play pickleball. <laughs> Brandon, how about your off season? Um helping the Raiders a little bit on the basketball court and playing a lot of basketball. That's, that's been about it. <laughs> so did I, did I miss my chance in life to be a better golfer? Cause I I'm a golf hockey guy and I bump into so many guys yes. who, are, who are golf basketball. Did I miss yes, them? you did. I can't. Undo I don't it. think so. Thank you. <laughs> Every, yeah, you might golfers, be able to try. I get a lot of golf guys who say that, that, that they wish that they were hockey players. So I kind of find some kind of, some kind of self you know, I wish I would have taken, or I wish I would have given it a try when I was when I was a kid. It really wasn't a thing around here until the Penguins kind of, I think, planted some seeds around here. But that was well after right. I was out of high school. Um, you know, in the you know eighties, there was I didn't know anybody that played hockey anywhere around here. Um, I, I would have liked to try it. I played some um, like street hockey on rollerblades in college, and I loved it. But I never, I've never actually gotten on ice and tried anything like that. So on that thought about <laughs> getting going with sports, the 2023 golf season is getting going. And uh, I guess my, my approach getting ready for the golf season is not really checking my grips, not cleaning the irons, not checking out the new stock of balls. It's really just making sure that the beers that I want on tap are on tap. That's why I'm a <laughs> yeah, <right>. 13 foot. <laughs> how do, how do guys who have the game that you guys have, how do you get ready for the uh, golf season? Um, now that I'm out of school, kind of just trying to swing a little bit every once in a while. I mean, I like going to the simulators like once a week, but like you can only go so much. It's not you can't see the ball fly. That's what that's what I want to see. So I've been doing that a little bit and every day it's nice out. I will be leaving work to go golf. <laughs> Garrett, what's your what's your warm up to the, to the start of the golf season every spring? You know what? Being that I had um, surgery in December on my knee, I, I've been trying to just kind of take it easy, kind of. You know, I started off, you know, just swinging in the net in the in the room I got here in the attached to the house. How do you guys look at the start mm -hmm. of this in terms of your calendar? Um, you got your club events, you got some regional. I know Brandon, you've talked about some 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 bigger ambitions this summer. How much are you setting out a calendar of some things you want to hit this year? I actually signed up for the US Open qualifier. Nice. Um, work's kind of been pushing me to do it. They want me to kind of get back into it. And I'm, I obviously kind of want to, cause those are just fun to go play. You play some really, really cool courses. What's your local schedule? Like some member guests, some key scrambles Wednesday night. I, golf, club. Yeah. Wednesday night golf league, most importantly, followed by Thursday mm -hmm. night golf league in the St. Christine's. Um, I just try to plan everything I can that, I mean, th those are the fun events, getting out to see everyone in the area early and everyone's trying to think of the same thing, trying to get, get rid of the stupid snow that we had yesterday. I, I kind of feel like the same way as Brandon. I, I try to fill it up and at least stagger something. We got something every three or four weeks to look forward to. So kind of, even if you have a to step away for a little bit, you have something on the radar that kind of gets you kind of working towards peaking again, if you can. Um, so I'm going to try to do the senior open. Um, probably going to try to play the mid am. Uh, again this year not again i'm going to try to do the qualifier again this year probably i, I had the highway am on my radar again probably the Ohio mid am stuff like that I, i'd like to put a, a few kind of more key type events on the schedule just to give me something to look forward to you know i don't want you to crush my ego too much but i hope that the greatest is on your calendar maybe or is that uh depends if it's oh it's definitely on the calendar well, yeah um i don't think there's any conflicts yet um but no, it's definitely it's definitely one I like to do. Would you have been doing um, in April, uh, back in the previous Garrett Frank career of uh, of being on the pro tour? I would still be in Florida most likely. I I always came back uh, a couple of days ahead of the uh, sectional qualifier for the U.S. Open, which is usually like second week of May. Uh, so I'd get up here just a couple of days before that, and I always looked at it like a an advantage because I would have been down in Florida playing for the last six months, you know, twelve hours a day, and I come up here and and I. Figured I'm, I like my chances against 
a crop of people that especially on a year like this have only been playing for a couple of weeks you know so i always right. like to set that time to get back up here but I'll be um i'll be setting up carts at about 6 30 in the morning and that course then would kind of give you privileges to play the rest of the day and then i'd go out and have a group of guys you'd find and i'd practice until they get off work and then we'd all go play till dark basically that was my that was my schedule and how, how many years did you spend on tour and, and what tours did um like on a canadian tour proper only six years but banging around on other mini tours i did it for from 90 99 till probably 2013 or 14 full-time and then i i tried to play a little bit after that and it wasn't really working once you have the you know family commitments and that stuff it was kind of time time to slow down a little bit well i'm glad to have you guys uh keep greatest on your calendar and glad for the uh, the great match that you guys offered the greatest field last August. Brandon, congratulations for championship number six. Um, Garrett, congrats, Brandon. Garrett, a long, a long line of guys, six years of guys who tried to take on Brandon on Sunday, and uh, and it's just a, it's a tough feat. Um, both you guys posted great numbers going in. Brandon, you went the uh, sixty-five seventy-one on Friday, Saturday, Garrett. Brandon had the 65 on, on Friday to open the day and you had the hold my beer score on Saturday with a 64. <laughs> and then Gary, you were 69, 64. Both of you had that heading into the uh, finals. And then on the finals, uh, Brandon, you posted a 68. What's your, what's your lowest Sunday score for greatest? Um, 68 has got to be pretty close. 67, 60. There, there haven't been too many 60s. I think it's 60. There, yeah. There haven't been too many 60s. Yeah, I think Cole um, has got the low greatest score on Sunday, the 66. Was it 66, right? Yeah. I think the low, I, I think 60 might be it. I think I've done it maybe once or twice. I've teased folks that if you're going to beat Brandon at Lake Club, you better be up by 15 strokes heading into the final four holes. Because that's <laughs> a bitch. It just <laughs> seems to find strokes on those last four. But let's actually look to a, a post event interview. Uh, but, um, up and down. So you're going into Sunday as the leader. Is this your first time going into Sunday as a leader? What, what are you thinking? Um, yeah, I think it is the first time going in as a leader. Um, well, it's it's one of those, you know people are going to play the late club well. There's guys that play it every day and, and know it. So can't take your foot off the gas. You got to go got to go hit good shots and and play well or else one of these guys is going to catch you. Talk about the day and how it was going and holding on to the lead. You know, it wasn't that bad. I, I got off to a – I think I bogeyed the um, number 11. And and then I, I just was stringing some pars together. I didn't make a whole lot of birdies that day. I think I got one on the par five. Uh, what was that, 15 maybe? Um, I hit one real close on 17, I think. I hit one to kick in, which is always nice in a in a, yeah. in a a round like that. Um, it wasn't one of those flashy days, just kind of plugging along, making some pars, and trying not to make mistakes. Yeah, looking at the stats here, there was a um... – Two shot difference in your final score, Brandon. You finished two hundred four. Garrett, you finished at two hundred six. And on the day, it was a five shot difference on the day. So you can do the math quickly to figure out. How to um, Brandon, talk about your day and posting again a sixty eight, which is a great, fantastic number for Sunday late club finals. I think I started par par, which is always good to start on the back nine par par because those are 11. probably yeah, those are probably. I mean, you could hit a perfect tee shot on 10 and be in the middle of that fairway and the ball's three feet below you and you got to try to slap a shot into that green. And then number 11, if you don't hit that green, even if you do hit the green sometimes, it's hard to make a par, get up and down on that hole. So I was pretty happy mm -hmm. with that. I was just out there kind of trying to make as many pars, kind of probably the way that Garrett was feeling, just trying to make a bunch of pars and make the field know that you're kind of hanging around. You know what I mean? And I thought I played pretty well. Didn't do any like Garrett said. Didn't do anything flashy. Just kind of gave yourself a bunch of looks to try to make a birdie and make a run. Um, I like what you said, Brandon. Like to hear both of you guys talk about. Um, you're in there. You, you're playing your own game, but you also want to let the field know that you're here. How do you guys balance? Especially, you know, teach me as a hacker that you're there to play your own game, but you know that there's your your two leaders are right there with you. They're keeping an eye on you, and you're trying to play your game, but you're aware. Of what everyone else is doing. I guess Garrett, I'd love to hear your perspective. I always just try to play my game. I always just try to hit hit fairways and hit greens. And if you do that enough times, you're gonna get some close enough to have some good runs of birdies and, and maybe you're even gonna drop a 20 footer every once in a while. But so um so I'm looking at the uh the difference in the score <clears throat> was two shots between a, a Brandon championship versus a Garrett championship. And uh, yes. so Brandon you're 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 down one coming into nine. Um you don't you don't know where 
the leader's tee shot is yet because he hasn't hit yet. And we'll talk, Garrett, about your tee shot. If I'm one down on the last hole, I want to hit first. And uh, Garrett would probably say the same thing because I want to feel yeah. like I'm putting the pressure on him. I have no pressure. What do I – And I don't care if I hit it in the water. You, you know, what I, like it's over if I hit it in the water. I want to be the guy to hit the first shot. So when I hit it, I think – remind me if I'm wrong. I think it was 180 yards maybe like 178 does that number sound right i think and the wind was kind of i wouldn't say swirling but it was the normal into off the right wind yeah. and i thought i hit the perfect shot it stopped right. it had to have been a blade of grass on the top of that hill because if it rolls another inch it goes right down i mean i'm not three feet but i got like a seven footer for birdie right. and it sat right on the top of that hill so i mean that's all. all, right. Right. Yeah. all right. So, so Garrett, you got a one shot lead. The guy who's who's chasing you puts it to the center of the green. He's got a twenty footer on a green he knows well, and you step up. I mean, I, I was surprised also when Brandon hit his shot. I thought it was going to take the slope and be like real good looking birdie range. Where it was at, um, I figured he knows the green is good enough. He's not going to three putt it. So, I have to be playing to at least give myself a chance for par. You know, I mean, you're not going to. Yeah assume that he's going to three putt from up there so th my mindset was you know just somewhere on the green um if i could get it on the you know center of the green i, I guess is just all i was thinking and um i kind of screwed that up it seems that that ninth hole stage has just produced some amazing pivots yeah um you know what i it was kind of a, a now looking back i mean it, like a, along the way there's a couple of things i could have and should have done to to check myself, but just, just not being thorough, I guess the, I played an outing there a week or so before that. In my mind, I thought it was middle because that pin during that tournament was middle. And I actually made a hole in one that day. Um, so I'm thinking nice. middle of the green. Nice. So when I laser it and get whatever the yardage was, I'm thinking middle yardage. And I didn't even think to go look at a head, like a, a yardage marker and actually do the math and find out where in the depth of the green that the pin was. And I, I'm thinking middle and it was actually back and, I should, it should have been a red flag for me to say, look, you know, the pin's back. You're not going to play this full distance. You're going to play this eight to 10 yards short. Um, so I picked a number, you know, I had the number in my head thinking in the middle of the green and it was just one of those, you smooth it and I tugged it just a little bit, not too bad, but it, it just jumped off the club face and stayed a little bit low and it got under the wind. And I guess from the guys up there told me that it landed kind of in right on the cut between the, either the green or just barely in the back fringe. And it was dry enough that it just, shot forward and, and hit that mound that was back there and went off the back side of the mound and into that hazard back there. But yeah. just obviously he had, had the wrong club and just wasn't, wasn't going through my steps like I should have to, to kind of have the right club in my hand. Difference of playing the ball back there versus taking the ball up in the drop zone. Do you think there was a strategy there? I never thought of the drop zone in my head. And had I obviously thought of a drop zone, I would have taken it. Cause I think that chip was way easier than the one I tried. Yeah. I think it was, probably some nerves and, and kind of like, oh, you know, like crap, I just screwed this up, you know, and your things are moving really fast and you didn't, I didn't take the time to slow down and, and even consider other options like a drop zone. And that's hundred percent on me, you know? Yeah. From, from a crowd perspective, Garrett, we're sitting there and we're watching thinking he's got to have a million thoughts going through his head. Cause he's got a slight, you know, window to, to, to fix this and uh, mm -hmm. talking with the crew and talking with folks and yeah, hoping for the best you know, as you're making that choice of, what, of how to play it. Brandon, from, a, from an opponent's perspective, what are you sizing up as this is happening? I – sizing up, I think, is the wrong term. I tried to stay out of it because if I was in that situation, I mean, I would want help from my opponent. To, like, now I feel bad I didn't even think about telling you to go to the drop zone. But, like, I, like I said this with Brian – the year before i don't want to beat garrett because he does this you know what i mean like i want to beat garrett because i go out and make a birdie and we go to a playoff hole i don't want to see garrett hit it in the hazard and be make a par to win like and i think garrett would want the same thing if i was in that situation exactly. yep. and i i never want to see a player have something like this happen like i, I don't care if i'm going to win the u.s open I, I mean obviously i'd want to win the u.s open but I don't want that to. That might see this be the happen. one exception. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, take that. Back. <laughs> Unless I'm playing you, I'll, I'll, I'm fine with that. But like, I, 
I wouldn't even, and I think I would have done the same thing you did. I would have never even thought to go up to that drop zone because like, it's technically a hazard, but you think drop zone, the first thing that snaps in your head is water hazard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At least that's the way that I would have thought about it. And I mean, yeah, that chip would have been probably easier. It's still not that easy of a chip. You would have had more green to work with, but like, right. I, I would have probably done the same thing you did in that situation. I've been out of competitive golf for so long. There's so many rules that have changed that I'm, I, I, I'm tentative or hesitant to do almost anything because I'm like, right. this is the way I used to do it, but is this still the way, like... Curious. Um, actually, let's go Brandon first. What do you like about Garrett's game? You could see Garrett on the golf course, and it looks like he's 10 under, and it looks like he's 10 over at the same time because it's always the exact same. He's always in the he's always in play. He's always in the fairway. He's always on the greens. So you're going to make putts. The rounds that Garrett, kind of the same way I do, when he gets it going, he's going to get it going. You know what I mean? like the 64 that he shot at Trumbull, he's always in play regardless if he shoots even or 64. And it's cool to see Garrett. He's always in the match. Uh, Gee, when you, when you watch Brandon's game, what do you, what do you pick up about what's, what's unique about his play? I, he doesn't call himself a, a power player, but he's definitely a power player. Um, he hits it a long ways and he, he does it with accuracy. He's not just a slash at it. And, you know, one out of six drives, you're missing three fairways over, you know I mean? He hits it hard, but he keeps it in play. He has what I wish I'd have had my whole career was he has his putter is is ridiculous, especially when he gets it going. He can make make putts from just about anywhere. I know you did that at Mill Creek uh, round yes, one. I kind of got to go some stuff in and I was like, holy <laughs> cow, this, this is unbelievable. Yeah. And just like two weeks ago, someone said, you know, Br Brandon and his distance, Brandon and his irons, but no one talks about Brandon and his putting. And that putter just is pretty, pretty, pretty lethal. So talk to me about um, about playing greatest and getting the uh, getting the crew together. What I mean, Garrett. I mean, Brandon's been with us since he was what, fifteen? Brandon, probably sixteen. Um, probably younger than that. Yeah, honestly. But the Garrett, you coming in um, after after such a career that you had was really kind of nice for us to see that you felt this was a a, a tournament worth you putting your time into. So thank you for that. Um, what, yeah. do you, what what do you like about having greatest on your calendar and what it means for the community? Uh, it's 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 local bragging, right? My life will still be complete without it, but I'm going to be ticked if I don't win one before this is over with. So. I'm going to still, uh, I'm still going to try to get myself up for it, you know, and, and be ready to play it, you know, but you can't, that's all you can do. You can get yourself ready and, and there's other good players there playing as well. And they're all competing. So you're not, you know, you just got to go get your best shot. And one of these days, you know, maybe we'll get it done. Yeah. B after, after six titles, are you getting bored of this or what? How can you get bored? It's <laughs> golf. Yeah. You've um, everyone says that, uh, well, it's, he, he's won six times. It's just his. I said, you don't, you don't understand. So you've not watched the last four holes and then and, and the amount of people who've had the chance of uh, court dupes had it twice. Joey's had it, you know, he could have had a second win. Um, and now last year to watch Garrett the same. So it's just uh, fun watching you compete and scratch along. It's not a uh, start to finish win win for you. So congrats for having the sixth one Garrett going back to last year briefly. Um, you know, one of the coolest things about about your game is not just your game, but also having one of the feistiest caddies known to amateur. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times? You know how many people she's uh, she's told? I told him to hit five iron on the last hole instead of four. You know, she loves having a good story to get get some. Like, you know, she needs something to go tell people about. And everybody in Mahoning County has now heard that she would have recommended I hit one less club, and it was all on me that I hit the wrong <laughs> club. Oh, you mean this is on this number nine hole? Really? That we just talked about? Oh, yeah. Well, it didn't really happen that way. But, yeah, that's what she'll have you believe. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How does that convert? I told him to hit five. I told him four was too much. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I am um, so glad to have you uh, on the camera tonight and so glad to have you part of Greatest. And, you know, win or lose, you guys were just such great champions. Um, who, whoever had the title, it was just fun watching you compete last year. This fun. You know what? Win or lose, it's still fun. I miss – there's very few places I get that adrenaline, like, and I got used to playing in tournaments all the time. And that's one of those, whenever you get, you know, a little bit, you're feeling the pressure and you get the butterflies. That's, that's what you, that's what it's all about. You know, it's fun. I, regardless of how it turns out, you know, you're in, I'm in it for the, for the thrill of competing and, and you don't get that, you know, every day, you know, so it, it's fun regardless of what happens. That little itch. That's all it is. Yep. <laughs> well, boys have a great uh, golf season. I hope to see you out there. 
And uh, and if I don't see you after beforehand, looking forward to seeing you the second weekend in August.